<clears throat> so a bandsaw is just one large blade that's put together, so it's just one circular band, um, and it goes around two different wheels inside the machine. Here, down here, and turn on power, and it will be spinning. Um, basically, a bandsaw. Before you do anything, before you open up anything, you always want to make sure it's unplugged before you do anything. So now I can open it up and know. Nothing will turn around and there won't be any dangerous for me. So a bandsaw is just a large steel band, saw blade, um, that goes around two wheels. That the motor's down here, you turn it on, and the motor gets um, the wheel spinning. Um, and as it spins, the saw blade needs to rotate and get pushed down that way. So a couple things to think about. When it's getting set up, I'll pretty much always have it set up. But if you have to change the blade for some reason or anything like that, always make sure it's off. Um, and the teeth of the blade should always be facing downwards, okay? Everything gets pulled down into the table, um, so you have it that way, okay? Or on and off, which is the buttons right here. Um, that's pretty much all the other we use. So, what happens is this right here lifts up this wheel, and it causes tension and pulls um, the band tight. The bandsaw is good for making a, a large variety of different cuts that you can make. And it's all depending on what type of blade is in the bandsaw. So in our jet right here, we have a half inch resaw blade. Um, so that's going to be more for straight cuts and resawing, which I'll show you in just a minute. Over here on the delta, and what we'll usually on this one, is quarter inch blades. So quarter inch blades, um, they're not going to be as easy to cut straight. Um, so you're going to be cutting more curves with it, um, and so on like that. So, the smaller the blade, the more curves you can do, or the tighter curves that you can make. So if you're trying to cut out a circle, trying to cut out a shape, um, you want the smaller blades to do more of the hard turns and curves like that. All right, so we're gonna show you basically how it works. Again, your power button is right here. I'm gonna turn it on, I'm just gonna keep this. You always wanna make sure that the wood piece is kept on the table. And when you're cutting, both hands are on each side of the blade. You never want to have your hand directly in line with the blade. So you might be making some curves where you can move it, but both hands should be on each side of the blade. That way, if anything happens and goes through, you don't touch the blade. basic curve kind of coming through it. Um, so you can do that. So again, this is the first saw that we've used where it's not really. Alright, so sometimes when you might be making a curve um, or you have a larger piece of wood um, and what happens is when you turn it too hard or something that the blade gets crooked and can break. Um, so one thing that can help with that is what's called relief cuts. So you want to make relief cuts so as you are making the cuts some of the waste pieces fall off and it allows relief and not so much pressure on the blade. So an example of that is I'm going to do some relief cuts here and then cut my line. So after you make the cut, you might have some relief pieces like that. So you either want to wait until the blade's completely stopped to grab all those pieces to throw them away, um, or if you have a small piece, you can use a piece of wood to move it away. But you never want to have your hand anywhere again near the blade. You want to make sure you're on both sides of it and you're balanced. Another thing that you want to do is you always want to set the height um, directly over your piece of wood. So those couple of pieces that I already cut, I forgot to adjust it 
Um, you can see it still makes the cuts, uh, but to get a better cut, a straighter cut, you always want to drop down. So on the back sides of each one, there's a knob that's going to lower the guides. So you want to have it maybe about a quarter of an inch above your piece of wood. Um, especially when you're making straighter cuts, that gives less give for the blade to move left and right. So, you can... so another thing you can do on the bandsaw is what's called resawing. Resawing is when you're basically changing the thickness. So instead of taking like a two inch piece and running it through the planer 15 times to get it to an inch, what you can do is cut it basically in half on the bandsaw. And there's still gonna be some sanding or some planing you might have to do to straighten it out. Um, but we can do that. So when you guys are gonna be resawing in class, you're gonna be using some stop blocks. And we're gonna hold each side and sandwich the piece of wood and run run it through the saw. So right now it's a little bit low, so I have to make sure it's at least high enough to go over my stop blocks. So I adjust that. So that's really the first thing you do is adjust that. Just like on the table saw, you would adjust the blade height and so on. All right, so I'm gonna cut this piece in the middle here. So instead of running it through the planer to getting it to be basically a quarter of an inch or a half an inch, I'm gonna run it through the bandsaw. push blocks I am on each side of the blade so I know there's no way I'm going to touch the blade if I accidentally go through and it has that. So you can see that now I have two pieces that are about just under a half an inch each. Now these aren't perfectly straight you may get a little curved and it kind of goes back and forth so you kind of have to guide it to make sure that you're cutting through the middle of your piece um, but with a little bit of sanding I can sand those um, and then I'll have some nice thin pieces of wood to work with. So one thing that you should have when you are using the bandsaw is that your piece of material should be either S4S or at least planed or jointed. Um, so the surface should be smooth so you can run it through um, either through the planer or the joiner. And then if you're doing resawing, you definitely want to have a saw that's similar to the bandsaw is the scroll saw. Um, what happens here is this it just moves up and down over and over again and you can see it has um, it's just a small little blade with teeth pointing down again so you want to keep sure that the teeth are pointing down and it's going to cut through your wood so I have a little half inch piece of birch here plywood that I'm just going to cut um, you see that when this you see how skinny the blade is um, that it makes it a lot easier to make curves so if you're trying to cut out a logo or something um, I cut out a lot of State of Arizona, as the Cardinals logos or anything when I first started my business. And I did pretty much all of it on a scroll saw. So, um, let's just cut out, I'll just cut out a letter. So if you're gonna make a name sign or something, you can cut it out. So I'll just cut out W for Walters. Um, and let's go there. So I'm gonna draw out like a cursive W, kind of like the Washington Nationals logo. Not a very good drawing, but we'll see. So there's my little W. Now, obviously there's a little spot here that you would cut out in the middle. So if you were gonna cut that out, I'm not gonna do it today, um, I would drill a small hole through it using the drill bit. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna feed this through it. And then I can cut out that little spot. 
um, but I don't want to take this apart. So a couple things that this has, this basically has a little area here and all of them have a different type that holds it and adds tension to the blade. You have to have tension on the blade um, and they all have speed controls. So this one's here at the top, a couple of them have different knobs um, that you can control the speed with and then each obviously you want to make it the right speed for the type of wood that you're cutting. Um, so you can go slower or faster to end that. Um, so again, if I was going to cut out this, I would just drill a little hole, I'd undo the blade, put my piece through it, put the blade back on, tighten it, and then I'd be able to cut the inside, which I'll show you when we get to those kind of projects. Similar to the bandsaw, there's lots of different types of saw blades that you can get for your scroll saw. So there's, here's a couple examples. This one's about an eighth of an inch. This is about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, they're really small and they will break. So if it breaks, it's not a big deal. You would just replace it. Sometimes they just get bent and you can tighten it up. Um, but it, the key is to keep them from breaking is just making sure that they're the right tension and it's at the right speed. If you forget to do the tension and you start your saw, it's going to bend the blade and possibly break it right away before you even use it. So make sure when you're putting on new saw blades for the scroll saw that you always tighten the tension before turning it on. So the last tool that's very similar to both the bandsaw and the scroll saw is the jigsaw. So the jigsaw is basically a handheld scroll saw. You see it has a little blade here. Um, usually it's a little bit thicker. The teeth sometimes can go up or down depending on what kind of blade you get. Um, but basically what's going to happen is if I pull this trigger, it's going to move this up and down repeatedly just like the scroll saw does. Um, so with this you're able to, with your hand, basically cut out shapes and do everything like that. So I've done a couple um, bigger projects. If you're using something maybe like that's going to be four feet wide or you're doing letters that are going to be a couple feet big, this would be a better tool than using the scroll saw because there's not a lot of uh, room for that. So again, like we've talked about before, some of the examples of some of the projects you might do using the bandsaw, scroll saw, and jigsaw is like this. So there's a piggy bank. Um, you can see that that's been cut out using the scroll saw. Same with this part. With curves that tight, most likely it's done on a scroll saw. If it was a little bit wider, you can do it on the bandsaw. So this one was a combination. Um, I did most of the main parts on the bandsaw, um, but like some of the smaller curves like this was done on the scroll saw. So that's the basics of both the bandsaw and the scroll saw, along with the jigsaw. Um, again, anytime you're making adjustments, you always want to make sure that machine is off or unplugged. Um, you want to keep balance, you always want to keep your hands on each side of the blade. Um, other than that, now obviously with the scroll saw, you can get a little bit closer to it, but you should be going at a lot much slower pace, and it's really small. Um, Thank you for watching the video on the bandsaw and the scroll saw along with the jigsaw. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel, as well as check out some other videos that I have posted on some how-to-dos and the safety of other tools in our shop. Thanks. Have a great day.